Hi Shannon, it's uh, Mr. Healy here. I'm going to try a new thing where I'm doing video feedback on people's essays and I'm hoping to be able to give you some insight into your own essay by giving you a mini tutorial doing it this way. Forgive me if things go a little bit uh, long-winded because it's the first time I've used this uh, software and also just enjoy the fact that I get to speak to you without you interrupting or rabbiting on at me, which is fantastic. Okay, here we go. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to read it through word for word. And there'll be certain moments where I will circle, highlight bits and talk to you about them. Here we go. First of all, I'd like to say well done in doing a plan. I'm really pleased about that. Really pleased that you bothered to put that into your structure. Now, while both of these texts are sent on love and dedication to one's spouse, they I might want to say one's spouses, not sure might be a pedantic correction there. They carry very different tones created by their language, via their language. I think via is a little bit weird. Because the lover in kaleidoscope is unnamed for the entirety of the poem, and the voice does not see them, the reader becomes aware that there's something wrong or melancholy about the voice's lamentation. Lovely vocabulary, really like your AO1 there, that's good. Um, the poem uses rhyme sporadically. Uh, only when we cut put it in the poem, being made from the words cry and why, suggesting that the voice's grief and pain is the only thing in their life that is clear anymore. Now, I want to just pick you up on this a little bit. First of all, I don't like you using this word sporadically. I don't think it's correct. I, I genuinely don't. I think that if we look at the poem, let's have a look over here. If I look at this poem, here we go. Have a look here. So, to climb these stairs again, so you've got Tray, books, frocks, holiday. So you could argue that's kind of an ABBA. Find, kaleidoscope, resigned, hope. So that would then be a CDCD. Day in, tray, skin. There you've got rhyming again. So it's not really that sporadic. And then rhyming with the rhyming couplet, cry and why at the end. So it's kind of, what sort of form is this? Count the number of lines in it. Well, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Anything ringing bells yet? 14 lines. Should be a sonnet. Is it a Shakespearean sonnet? Well, the cry and why would suggest so. So then why is the form relevant? Well, it's a love poem. and Sonnets are often love poems. So, going back to your point, cry and why are rhyming couplets at the end. That This is part of the Shakespearean form for... Uh, uh, sonnet, so I'm just going to write that in, uh, partly, so just putting that in, partly sonnet form, and, let's have a look, so that's done, and I also want you to think that, uh, also, the cry and why, there's something interesting there, I want you to think about why the rhyming couplet, why the couplet emphasises this, and try and make a bit of a deeper point. Now, if I just move that to the right place, okay. Meanwhile, the novel extract remains light-hearted uh, in its entirety. The only characters mentioned are my husband and I. The language in a, is in a way exclusive, keeping the anyone else outside. I don't think that really makes sense there, Shan. Uh, keeping the anyone else. The anyone else? I'm not really sure, of the shared emotions, keeping anyone else outside of the shared emotions and moments. This and the use of I and my give the extract a tone of selfishness. Yes, I like that. It is very self-centred indeed. Um, Jane Eyre is possessive over her relationship and her partner. While Kaleidoscope um, speaks of small things that the voice was fond of, like you pillowed with your books, connoting deep, intimate connections between the two, I was wondering what that meant. It's a little bit vague there, because you're, you're saying between the two, the two, what, books or the two of them? Anyway, Jane there does not speak so much of Edward's quotes, but more of their time together. We talk, I believe, all day long. This suggests that the couple in Kaleidoscope are somewhat more reclusive, preferring their own company, whereas Edward's social status forces the couple to be more outgoing. I'm not quite sure where you've got from that, but we'll keep going. Uh, both pieces use the term flesh when describing their devotion to their lover, rather than terms such as body, the less grisly in imagery. What else could the word flesh suggest, though? Flesh. I want you to think about that. Where else do we hear the word flesh? And I want you to come back with some sort of comment on that, if that's all right with you. Uh, why flesh? 
The fact that these words have been selected implies an almost savage desire for the voice's lovers. You could say it's savage, yes. And also in the case of kaleidoscope, this imagery goes deeper. It's the sacrifice of every part of the body. I think, to me, it reminds me of religious things. Um, here is my body, here is one flesh, that sort of thing. Also, when you have a liaison with someone, people say that you become one flesh. It's in the marriage ceremony uh, words. Um, this can be attributed to the loss and is an amplification of the feelings in Jane Eyre. Okay, a little bit vague there. Not too happy with that ending of that paragraph. But otherwise, looking good. Let's keep going. Right, page two. The voice of Bronte's piece can also be seen as more active than that of Dunn's. Jane's voice is more passionate about what she's done. Field, tree, town, river, sunbeam, cloud. The listing increases the pace and implies that Jane is becoming more excited as she speaks. Furthermore, she conducted him where she wished her to go. Her servitude to her husband uh, d being demonstrated in the way that she is both the apple of his eye and his red hand. Now, I really like the fact that you've embedded several quotations. That's useful. But I'd like to also think what, why these natural images? I want you to think about that as well. Why would she use all these natural images? What does it suggest? Okay. Um, I'm just going to put that there. So why are these natural images? Um, meanwhile, in close scope, the pace only slows towards the end as the reality of what has happened sinks in. The voice was once devoted as Jane Eyre, but her loss has stopped him from going any further. Mm, his loss, sorry. My hands become a trail. I like this quotation. Well chosen. Um, suggests that they have always doted upon their lover. Even after losing them, they cannot break out of the routine from their time together. At the same time, the simile combined with offering me, my flesh, my soul, my skin, connotes the voice of desperation and despair over the loss. This type of emotive language can be found uh, with quite the same amount of depth in Jane Eyre. With, I don't know what that means, with quite the same amount of depth. What do you mean by that? Um, while the words blessed and bosom are used to suggest how deep and passionate relationship their, their relationship is. The extract lacks the elegance created in the poem through the slow pace and listing of things in the voice of doors. I really like this point about offering me my flesh, my soul, my skin. I think that you do have that desperation and despair. I think we need to concentrate on that and think about uh, what you call that. I mean, where's the literary term there? What literary term are we going to use in that point? So I'm just putting that in. Lit term. What are all those commas called? Why haven't we called them it then? So, from here, let's have a look. Okay. The voice of the poem is left helpless by the death of their lover. And as they navigate their house, seeming to look for their lost partner, might be to find you. They appear lost. For they climb the stairs a dozen times a day. I love this use of embedded quotations. Really good. Connoting that they are still searching and walking around hoping to see them again. The line I stand, I wait and cry is monosyllabic. and has a slower pace than the other lines. That's good, good point on structure. Suggesting the reality of that has happened. Right, don't know what that means. Is slowly descending upon the voice. This annoys me, this ellipsis. The ellipsis cuts the sentence into three. It's not an ellipsis, is it? What is it? It's a caesura or caesurae. Yep. I can put that in there. Uh, the idea of the voice of kaleidoscope being lost in ties uh, in a literal sense with Jane Eyre, helping watch her to navigate the days without his sight. I like that. Um, the two pieces together here show how the loss of one half of the couple will result in the other either being either lost in the darkness or desperate to do their former duties with no one to help. Excellent, Shannon. I'm just going to go into now what grades I would have given that, if you can just wait one second. Um, really impressed with actually your style. It's probably the best I've seen you write in many, many essays. So well done. I think it's the best ever, really. Now, I'm going to just quickly go over this. So A01, that's particularly what I was impressed with today. I've really got to admit, 
blew me away. I don't know what's happened to your writing, whether you've been practicing more or maybe just confidence has suddenly come through. I don't know. But that was a 29. That's an A grade just at the bottom, so that's an A3. Let's have a look now at your AO2. That's all of our uh, use of close analysis. Now on this you've got a 26, and that's partly because you missed out on those caesuri and you used lots of embedded quotations, but I just wanted a bit more literary terminology when doing that analysis. And also one thing I'm telling everyone, form. You miss the fact that it was a sonnet. It has to be noticed in the future, okay? Um, now, let's have a look finally at AO3. Um, in AO3, you did well here. Really nice way that you compared continually throughout it. 29, the close comparisons were great. So, well done. Good essay. And really, you should feel pretty proud of yourself. In total, I think I'd end up giving that an A grade. Well done. A3 probably. Thank you very much Shannon and well done. I'll send you a form which I want you to feed back on. Let me know as soon as you've done it. Thank you very much. Cheers.